GolfJ.com. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Golf J Podcast on FingerLakes1.tv. I'm Jim Sinecropi alongside Rhett Taccone and Doug Brown here inside the FingerLakes1.com studios in the North Park building in Seneca Falls, New York on Memorial Day, Monday, May 29th, 2017. And I hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. And tonight, we're going to we have a few things to talk about. Um <laughs> Kevin Kisner won the Dean and DeLuca. NCAA golf tournament, uh, our golf championships underway. Girls complete, guys this week. Um, we're going to review the Lampkin flat cat putter grip. Where did I do with it? You got it over there. Okay. And uh, we're going to... Bernard Longer has made won the senior career Grand Slam and tied Nicholas for champions slash senior tour majors. And um, I might be forgetting about something. Um, geez, what else is there? Oh, yeah, <laughs> Tiger Woods charged with a DUI this morning. And uh, I think that we probably should get underway right now with, uh, with that news, the big story of the day, even though uh, it's just uh, you know, the weird stuff continues here. So... Um, Tiger Woods arrested for driving under the influence early Monday morning, as first reported by WPTV.com. Woods was taken into custody in Jupiter, Florida, where the 14-time major champ lives. According to the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office website, Woods was booked at 7.18 a.m. Monday morning and released from custody at 10.50 a.m. The Palm Beach Post reported Woods was pulled over around 3 a.m. on Military Trail about 10 minutes from his restaurant, the Woods Jupiter, and officers said Woods wasn't driving in the direction of his home. Now, since just in the last half hour, 45 minutes, Woods released a statement saying that alcohol wasn't involved. It was an adverse reaction to prescription medication. Um, and he apologized and said it wouldn't happen again and commended the Jupiter um police department and police officers for their professionalism good job guys so um thanks a lot <laughs> it was probably easy thanks a lot yeah. so you know there's so many questions here and a lot of it's conjecture i mean just this morning brownie and i played golf we had a great match we were me and my partner were four down after 13 ended up tying it up on the 18th tee only to lose the 18th hole uh but we were on the 14th fairway when all of a sudden across the phone comes the news with Tiger and the mug shot, which I can Beautiful pull, picture. pull up for you guys to see right now. Um, Yikes. That's awful. That's yeah. awful. And we were, we were shocked, and we started speculating as to what could potentially be going on. And not unlike the incident with him in 2013 was it with his wife 2008 2008 yeah. where you nine, know actually nine it first came out that she had smashed the window of his car and and, and that really <laughs> set off this whole downward spiral for tiger it wasn't immediate though remember in 2014 he won five tournaments and was player of the year uh but you know we so not unlike that night we started conjecturing what could be going on here uh i personally think that and I said it even this morning, DUI is different than DWI. They didn't right. say blood alcohol content. I wouldn't be surprised if it was a prescription painkiller type of deal. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised with all the surgeries that he's gone through that he may have developed an addiction to painkillers pain like so many Americans have. Yeah. And so it makes problem. me a little sympathetic um, you know, towards Tiger. But, again, this is coming off his fourth back surgery where he says he's going to be out at least another six months. So, you know, we can talk about this in terms of his potential to play golf again or even just to uh, be a functioning member of society again. Uh, I don't want to go on too long talking here, but one thing that we were talking about this morning, too, was that Tiger doesn't seem to have any real friends, you know. He seems like a real lone wolf. He doesn't have... His wife anymore. Um, his best friends that we know of are guys like Nota Begay, and they certainly don't spend a lot of time together. No. Right. So, you know, is he, yeah, I mean, again, this is all speculation, but Brownie, 
you're a t- you're a tiger guy. Yep. You've been wanting to see him come back. You've been you you've put your chips on the fact that he would return and win again one day. Right. Um, where are you at this point? Now, this is pretty discouraging news. Um, the whole year's been discouraging, but this kind of takes the cake. I have a couple problems with this. If it is prescription medication, okay, it, that's at least it's legal. But it's three o'clock in the morning. Um, he's an adult. If he's feeling the effects of some drugs, why is he getting behind the wheel of a car? And the other story is he's heading away from his home, again at three o'clock or three twenty in the morning. Maybe. So where's he been? Where's he going to? Is it an all-night Hardee's stand or something that he's got the munchies? Um, Maybe he's going to Perkins. Um, and the guy has enough resources to make one phone call and have. I'm sure thousands of people lined up to uh, give him a ride home um, or a helicopter or whatever he's got to have. <laughs> That's um, the behavior seems to be repeating more and more. Um, I watched ESPN this afternoon. The only thing I, I don't like about the whole thing is it, it's making most of the newscasts, dominating the newscasts. If it was anybody else, I'm not sure it would at the same level. I mean, he's obviously a very accomplished golfer with a history and all that. But, but he's, um, I mean, ESPN just was just, that's all he talked about. But um, this behavior seems to be continuing, um, abusive or addictive behavior. Um, I don't know. I'm not a professional, but when you read about him continually, there's not a lot of good news coming out. Well, um, the back pain, I struggled with it. He had spasms when he was in the Bahamas or Bermuda or someplace. He just had back spasms. I don't know much about that whole stuff, but it seems like it's muscular, and it should be a week or two you'd, with the treatment he would get, he'd be back on tour. Um, but then he had another couple surgeries since then. Um, I guess, the most, again, the most troubling thing I have is 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, not much goes on well at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, he's 40 years old. Um, I, I think I, I'm starting to lean towards he's done. Um, I, I don't know if he can ever recover and get back to as a professional golfer as we knew him. And it troubles me to say that because I've been a big fan for many, many years. Well, that, that picture right there says a lot of stuff. It just looks like a um, very sad person right there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, whether that's the case or not, he he has a, an addictive personality regardless whether it was golf or right. with women. I mean, look how much he practiced and he had to, to do how determined he was and addicted to the game of golf he was right. to, to get to where he was. Right. Um, so, I mean, it just seems like uh, – with everything that he's had go on in the last five, four years now since he last won, um, pain-wise, this is just doesn't seem to be something he can get past, and I right. think he's looking for any answer he can get in that regard. Right. But for the, the near term of last night, what, I mean, there's, there's so many ways he could have gotten home, but obviously he's leaving, he's going somewhere, so it wasn't about – taking an Uber or a taxi because he left his house and he was driving away from uh, Jupiter or his house. So. Yeah, and that's all, again, that's the part that's all speculation. We, yeah. could, we could come up with 30 different reasons why he might leave his home at 3 a.m. Sure. Um, some of them harmless, some of them, you know, not so harmless. Sure, right. But I, if it is an addictive thing, then he's in trouble because the painkillers are more addictive than any of the other stuff. Right. The yeah. golf or the the sex addiction that he that sure. he said he had. Right. Um, painkillers are, are much worse. And when you've gone through as many surgeries as you have, he's probably been popping these things for yeah. uh, you, you know a couple of years now. Maybe more. Well, and yeah. the pain he said he's been in, how how immense the pain was right. up until this last surgery. He's done nothing but say how bad he's felt. So you got to believe, like you're saying, right. He's got so many resources available to him more than right. more than any average person by far, right? And if you do want to go out, there's no need to drive. Um, I'm sure right. he can get to wherever he wanted to go with it. Well, you said an Uber or whatever. Um, um, I'm sure uh, you don't need to take an Uber. He can probably, you know, there's a, he's probably got somebody on call. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. So, and he didn't just start taking this medicine, right? I don't know how long it takes to become. Uh, was he woozy or whatever when he's driving? I I like to think you have a reaction pretty quick. Um, and I assume the labels would tell you don't drive a vehicle or operate machinery, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, just a lot of bad choices, obviously. And, uh, again, 3 o'clock in the morning. Um, fortunately, nobody got hurt that we're, we're aware of. There wasn't an accident. We don't know why he got pulled over yet. Um, you know, the terms of that, was he weaving, speeding, no headlights? Dash cam you know? footage is supposedly going to be released Tuesday. Right. That'll be revealing. Right. And he, I'm sure he got handcuffed and put in the back seat because um, that's a felony. Yeah. Right. So, um, 
and I'm sure that that, that community's buzzing. And, and Tiger's, you know, he's a legend for whatever it is. He's a legend for many things. Um, but now he's making the news for all the wrong stuff again. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, part of you wants to feel bad for him, you know, on a human level, but an, an equally as equally on a human level, you want to say, this guy's got it all, uh-huh. you know. America's very good about giving people breaks, right? You think about John Daly, you think about Steve Howe, I think was the pitcher for the Yankees and the Dodgers who had yeah. a lot of problems with Cocaine. some chemicals, you know, and they came back and America was great. Uh, but at some point in time, that all stops because – it's, it's awful behavior, so he, it's going to give up. I mean, John Daly's been pretty good lately. I'm sure if he had a few more episodes, maybe America wouldn't be so forgiving. But, but Tiger stuff is extreme, and um, he's not um, – you know, John Daly came from nothing to something, and Tiger came from something and seems to don't – almost like he doesn't care. Like, it, he doesn't respect stuff, and um, I don't know. I wonder what's in his – you know, what I think, too, is, okay, all this time that – the PGA Tour rolls on, and Jordan Spieth and mm-hmm. Dustin Johnson and Rory emerge. Uh, you know, and all these other great players. All this time, Tiger's just—he's. What does he do with his time? Yeah. You know, like for instance, it's Memorial Day weekend. Um, did he spend it with his family? Did he spend it in his mansion alone? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. you wonder what kind of state of mind it is you're in when, since you've been. You know, since he graduated from Stanford, he's essentially just been golf, 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 you know, 24-7, 365, and because of these back issues, and again, I've been one to contend that he has overblown the back issues. I'm probably in the minority there. I think most people accept the fact that, oh, he has serious back problems. That's why he's had these surgeries. Right. But, you know, let me run through a timeline, if I can, uh, of the recent saga of tiger woods going back to april 1st of 2014 when woods announced he'd missed the masters for the first time as a pro after undergoing back surgery his first back surgery and when that news came down that was pretty shocking but everybody was like okay once he recovers from back surgery he'll be back it's too bad he's got to miss the masters june 26th woods returns to competition at the quick and loans national and misses the cut shooting 74 75 Later that summer on August 8th, Woods missed the cut at the PGA Championship and looked to be in pain during the second round at Valhalla. Days later, Woods took his name out of consideration to be a captain's pick for the Ryder Cup, which was that fall. Fast forward to January 30th of 2015, Woods missed the cut at the Waste Management Phoenix Open after a second round 82, and that was when the chipping yips kind of emerged and um you know, that was surreal to watch Tiger not be able to chip the ball. You know, basic up and downs, you know, flubbing him like he's playing in, you know, Monday Night League. A 40 handicap. So, go f- just a week later on February 5th, Woods walked off after playing just 11 holes of his first round at the Farmers Insurance Open, citing another back injury. But drew a lot of attention there because that was the infamous press conference where he said his glutes weren't activating so that that during that stretch is where i said to myself tiger's lost it mentally it's not his back the chipping yips don't have anything to do with your back and you know the glutes don't have anything to do with your back and walking off in the middle of a tournament uh is you know after 11 holes so that that raised my ire you said a lot of you commented a lot about that during that stretch of time on, our, on this show. <laughs> if we go back over this timeline, yeah. I think about all the shows. Every one of these instances we yep. lead off our show with because yeah. that's the type of guy Tiger is yep. in the world of golf. The needle mover. Um, April twelfth, two thousand fifteen, Woods returned to the Masters and and he finished tied for seventeenth. He uh, he played great, you know, to go from chipping yips and walking off the course and missing cuts to tied for 17th at the Masters, you think, okay, here comes Tiger. He's going to be back again. Um, but uh, he fi- he also finished tied for 10th at the Wyndham Championship later that season on September 18th. This is 2015. But he announced um, that he – had undergone a second back operation at that point, and he would return early in 2016. Um, October 30th, 2015, Woods announced 
that he w underwent a, a third back surgery, okay? Um, that put him at three total back surgeries. And then on April 1st, 2016, on the Friday evening, or the um, Wednesday evening before the Masters, or no, the, the weekend before the Masters, he officially withdrew from the Masters. So now he's missed two of three m Masters in the past three years. And, of course, he didn't play this year in 2017. But June 7th, 2016, he releases a statement on his website saying he won't play in the U.S. Open or the Quicken Loans National, which is his tournament, I'm making progress, but I'm not yet ready for tournament competition. And eventually he withdraws from the British Open and the PGA as well. That was the first season, 2016, where he just didn't play uh, last year. October 2nd, 2016, and a bright spot in this timeline here for Tiger, where he was a captain, uh, a vice captain at the Ryder Cup for the U.S. winning team. And, and that was a positive week for Tiger, a rare positive week as far as the media goes for Tiger and he probably had a great time that week being involved in the fray in the mix of a big time golf event as a, as a captain um, so off of that he announces he'll make his long awaited return to golf at the Safeway Open the PGA Tour season opener for this season now we're up to 2016 fall of last fall which is this PGA Tour season and um, then he reversed his decision three days later uh, and withdrew on the Monday of the tournament because his game's still not competitively ready. December 2nd, he played in his first competitive event in 16 months, shooting 65 in the second round of the Hero World Championship. Four rounds of 73, 65, 70, 76, though, left him well out of contention. But uh, that 65 kind of got people excited, and that's the other thing that I just can't get straight in my mind is, like, is is physically not ready, but he shot a sixty five. Right. It doesn't make sense. But you see, right. the other scores might lead to to you thinking that over four rounds, maybe he's saying, you know, maybe a turn when he's saying tournament play, maybe he just can't do the four total rounds and feel good about it. So this was the event he tied for first in a number of birdies and over the four rounds, if mm -hmm. I remember yeah. right. Yeah. So he had some, obviously, some doubles and triples, maybe, and some others, but. He may, I think he had 22 or 23 birdies for the week, which is tremendous. So he then uh, signs that deal with TaylorMade on January 25th of this year. Mm -hmm. uh, then three days later, plays in his first official PGA Tour event since 2015, shoots 76-72 to miss the cut at the Farmers Insurance Open. That's a place he's won eight times. Yeah. Uh, February 3rd, following an opening round 77 in the Dubai Desert Classic, again he withdraws due to back spasms, which back spasms have nothing to do with a disc in the back like, or glutes. Like That's when I start to get s suspicious of Tiger with, with these injuries because they don't seem necessarily related. Right. And. And again, 77, I, that's why he withdrew. He can't, I, I think he can't handle shooting that score and thinking about coming back the next day and shooting even higher. Uh, March 31st, he announced he'll miss the Masters. Again, we thought he was playing in the Masters. He had a press conference scheduled and and uh, missed it for the third time in four years. Cited his back rehabilitation, uh, not allowing him the time to get tournament ready. And then on April 20th, amid speculation that he'd be returning for the U.S. Open, he announced he'd undergone a fourth back surgery and he'd be sidelined for six months. And that leads us to this morning, Memorial Day, May 29th. Woods arrested at 3 a.m. near his home in Jupiter, Florida for DUI. And, uh, yeah, and it, it just seems crazy to me. And my, the one thing I take away from all this is that uh, he... And, again, it's hard for me to say because I'm not in his body. I don't know what his back feels like. But I know that there's a lot of folks out there, including Phil Mickelson, who dealt with arthritis. Um, and none of these folks had to, you know, take essentially three years off, two, two, three years off of golf and keep – it seems like every time he feels like he's good enough to come back, he doesn't play well. Then, oh, he needs another surgery or something like that. It seems to me if he felt he was physically able to come back and play in these tournaments and shoot a 65 at the, at the Hero World Championship, um, 
I don't know. I don't know. I, I thought it was mental. I still think it's mental, and I think it's obviously gotten worse when he, he has this DUI and, and apparently has some issue, although it's not nothing's come out, with addiction to painkillers. I think it's a little bit of uh, mental and physical. The mental, I think, is a result of what's going on physically. I do think he has some major back issues. Um, mm-hmm. I, do, I do think that, you know, if you're having four surgeries – to try and get back to the way you were uh, before these surgeries, that definitely says something. But I think the fact that he's had four surgeries and he can't get back to where he was has has led him down a road of, you know, a depressed state, so to speak, or just lonely. I don't know. I mean, he, he had everything going for him up until 2008 when he, when he won that U.S. Open. He had a family. He had a, a daughter, another one on the way, or... I don't know. If, yeah, he, yeah, he had both kids at both that kids. time. Yeah. And so everything was going good. He, you know, he was friendly. We all thought he was this person that he was partially, maybe not all the way. And then we really found out he had some major issues that just led him down the path there. He seemed bulletproof yeah. right, at that time. Before right. the Thanksgiving issue with yeah. his wife, he seemed like just unstoppable and no flaws. Right. right, on or right. off the course. Just like, how could this? I mean, this guy's going to be the greatest of all time mm-hmm. in anything. You know, just as as much as he was going to win so many tournaments, he was going to be the most dominant right. person in any sport, uh, regardless of what the sport was. Yeah, he won the U.S. Open on a damaged leg. Yeah, Remember, he had a broken knee or some sort. There was some broken bone there in his leg, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah, and then so. it ended up with his uh, his ACL as well. I mean, he had mm-hmm. he had a lot of damage there, but just. He came back the next year. I mean, he lost to Y.E. Yang in the final round of the of the PGA Championship in 2009. So his game was still there. And 2014 won five, five events. times Player of the Year. So, you know, I do think he's got some major back issues. But I also think I agree with you, Jim, to the extent that it's a, there's a lot of mental things going on now just to do whatever he can do to get back to that. And I think that's part maybe where this – hopefully not, but well, addiction is going on. His back issues are probably caused by – you know, the amount of working out he was doing um, over the years, and then he swings so darn hard. Yeah. Um, you got to wonder if there wasn't some changes that could have been put in, you know, 10 or 15 years ago to swing a little bit differently to alleviate the pain wherever it is or the problem with wherever it is. Because, like, I mean, if you got a bad leg, you can swing a different way to have less pressure on your leg. Mm-hmm. Like, there's got to be a, a tweak that you could do with the coaches that he has access to to, I don't know, swing more upright, more flat, whatever, to uh, – finish in a different manner so you're not pinching some nerve or um, causing some muscular problems. There's so many guys that so. hit it farther than he does. It's oh, swing, yeah. swing much more fluid and smooth. But look at Jason Day. He's going through some of the same stuff. Now Rory McIlroy, kind of, and those guys all got ripped. Yeah. You know, and now True. they're all kind of having some similar issues, and maybe they're starting to pay attention a little bit more to slow down on that. Um, I don't know. Ed Fiore never had a bad back. Neither bad, did Craig Stadler. He had a bad front, but not a bad back. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Phil's not so, the most uh, in no, shape. No, he's guy a dope boy kind of all. Yeah, I mean, he's not in bad shape, but um, I don't know if the two go hand in hand that aggressively. You know, it's one thing to be in right. shape and, and exercise, but you know how much. Think about how much walking they do and how much right. just natural exercise they get just from just walking along. They play f- five times a week if they make yeah. the cut. No, six times a week if they make the cut. Yeah. Well, they're playing nine. Runs. Yeah, I mean, they. Are exercising all the time and moving all those muscles right. and, and body parts all those multiple times and then figure in the off season or a couple of weeks here and there where they're not playing but they're still practicing and that's probably even more grueling practice is probably more grueling than the round actually well to get uh to build your body like rory mcelroy or like woods transformed his body yeah in addition to all that tournament playing walking you have to work out regularly you have to lift weights regularly right. yeah and you know, i think about tiger's game in his his prime was quite a long time. His short game was phenomenal. He, he mm-hmm. won tournaments because of his putting, his chipping, his sand shots, 150 yards and in. He didn't need to hit the ball 300 yards. He could hit a 280 and still beat the field because um, he got it up and down from the garbage can. Um, so I, there's just, I, I think, a lot of mistakes made, you know, maybe back as far as like 2000. He went through a bunch of coaches. Maybe getting rid of Butch Harmon was the ultimate mistake. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, but, um, you know, and it, somebody, there's an awful lot of, I don't know the name, the words for it, but there's doctors and coaches that are combining together now that look at the whole biogenetics or whatever the right word is and the golf swing and all that. So um, with the ex, with the resources he has, somebody should have been able to put together a package that would 
prevent the damage that he has to his back if he has damage to his back. I'm not sure he does, but you're like really surgeries. coming over to my side, Brownie, yeah, on this. If you're really, even question that, you know, I'm disappointed for golf in a sense yeah. too because you know we. I grew up watching the tail end of Arnold Palmer's career, saw all of Jack Nicholas, and then I get to see Tiger Woods come along, and you know, and I'm getting, I got a couple of chapters left in my life, you know, but um, I, I saw Jack Nicholas and Tiger Woods, and arguably the two best golfers ever, and Tiger had a chance to become the record setter in my lifetime, and I really thought it would happen. Now the problem is, we're going to remember Tiger for these last several years, not the first 15. Yeah. where he really dominated because he was, he was a shot every round better than the next guy, which would he win by four or five shots. Mm. You know? and, um, so now we're going to remember him for all these failures. Um, I think golf loses out because there's, he's, his tournament's not going to have the notoriety of the Byron Nelson, the Arnold Palmer, the Jack Nicklaus. Yeah. I think it's going to fade away pretty quick. That's a good point. And then his long-term, his long-term endorsement potential, which would be just money for him, which is insignificant, but it's, it would help some company if they had Tiger Woods as their, as their uh, spotlight-endorsed guy, right? Arnold Palmer did Pennzoil, and everybody bought Pennzoil, right? Tiger Woods does something, I don't think anybody's going to buy it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You know? the, only, um, not, the, yeah. the only thing we're talking about Tiger for the last three years is, is, is not, not negative per se, but just nothing to do with uh, winning golf, yeah. nothing to do with playing well. I know we all thought he was probably going to be that he was back. I mean, he won some big tournaments that year. They won five. They were all like the Arnold Palmer and Doral yeah. and, and you know players. The, the I Memorial, think. yeah. I think he, I, he won he won five really really big tournaments. Right. And you know, since then the the conversation has just been all about is he coming back and when is he coming back. Right. You know, this is big news today, but we're getting to the point now where he's basically going to start to become irrelevant real soon here i mean it, in terms of golf yeah yeah well but i mean even even we'll move on i mean there's there's loads bron james or steph curry i mean there's you know he was the uh, apex of celebrity in golf right. he's what made in sports yeah in sports exactly i mean he filled in the void right after jordan retired right he was basically the next guy and nobody ever thought a golfer would be that big i mean in right. our minds jack nicholas is that big but in golf to have a golfer be the guy that was as big as Michael Jordan was at the time, and then take that mantle. It's, right. um, well, we miss out on him. Uh, you know, maybe sad. maybe someday he'll be out there hitting the ceremonial first tee at Augusta. You know, that would have been the traditional path of his career. Would have been to win another couple majors. Like even if he didn't match Nicholas's record. But you know, to to win a major or two in his forties, right. to you know compete and and make some runs at some other PGA Tour tournaments into his early fifties, yeah. maybe, and then to uh, you know be around at some of these you know bigger events, to always be at the Masters every year, the way Arnie and Jack and Player were, right. and to um, you know really at his own the Quicken Loans uh, tournament, you know, to really be a big face of that and be a part of golf and to be a Ryder Cup captain yeah. multiple times probably. Course design work would be much bigger if he was doing well playing golf right. too, you know what I mean? That would be a much bigger factor. Just you, you can stay relevant in golf so long and as big as he was. Sure can. I mean, to be, to be doing well in his 40s, which we've yet to see, would just – carry him all the way through i mean look how much we still talk about jack and even if even if you're not if you're a casual golf fan you know about jack because he's the record absolutely holder. Right. so you're still talking about him and he's still relevant well, well we'll probably still be talking about tiger but will it be a positive sense yeah that's the thing we just you know? we've we'll, we'll we won't until he does something more positive on the golf course right. we're, though, even those 14 majors we all know he won them and how big of an achievement that is, but we're right. still not, we don't talk about those anymore. It's not right. about golf anymore with Tiger Woods. It's just like, is he ever going to play again? Is he coming back? Now it's, you know, the trouble right. that he's gotten into a little bit. So, unfortunately, the the story on him now has gone 180 to a, to a negative story. Yeah, and to summarize it for me, I guess I'll have to rescind my invitation for him to come to member guest, <laughs> um, which I've been an advocate of for the last several years. So, um, I guess my spa, my spot's available to fill. So, so. <laughs> on our fantasy uh, uh, ad drop coming up in uh, in uh, July, are you going to finally say goodbye to him I, and I, pick um, somebody up? I regret not doing it the first pass, <laughs> and then I made a bunch of side bets in yes, another one with uh, Tiger just winning cash in the tour, yeah. and he's got zero. 
Yeah, I, I was. I think I got at, four bets. I was looking and, at the um, side action the other day, and I you're mean, gonna. I got a guy. A guy won a check. I got to pay a bet. I got. I yeah, lose. He's gonna. Check. Tiger's gonna cost yeah. you. Think about that too. Just in that pool. Think, think about that. He dropped. I drafted him in the eighth round. Yep. And way over to the side. So he was probably the seventieth pick in that pool. Yeah. Right. And he was. We used to argue about taking him out. Right. And not yeah. allowing anybody to have him. Yeah. So. Come on, Tiger. Shit, now get back. Do something right. Watch this show. Yeah, well, even at this, I don't think Tiger would enjoy watching this show tonight. Maybe he is one of our live viewers tonight down there in Florida. But probably, that would be cool. Probably in the jail cell. Somebody's watching Maybe it. Maybe we can get him on next week. Well, but he's, I, a, I, he's available. At this point, he's gone too far, though. I was never a Tiger fan. I never really, and, and, and I was one of the first to say that I thought he was done um, when he lost that dominant putter and in short game that brownie was talking about and i thought it was more mental or as mental as it was physical but at this point it's gone too far right i don't want tiger woods to life to be ruined yeah. um and again it's hard to feel really bad for a guy who has all the money in the world to do with whatever he wants with his life to to transition away from golf but right. but that's that picture is, is sad it's yeah. sad it is it didn't fade away gracefully that's for sure so, so and and also as a role model for African American um young African American golfers or even African Americans in general who um you know can look up to that guy and say man this guy could remember when Tiger first came to Augusta there were still mm-hmm. um places that members of Augusta probably didn't like seeing him walk around in their clubhouse just right. because he was black. Right. And um, and so there's that aspect to it, too, this fall from grace for, from Tiger. But right. we've, uh, we've it's been more than half of our show, <laughs> which when we woke up this morning, we didn't even know that we'd be talking about this. So we have other stuff to talk about. Good. So quickly, let's pivot to uh, last week's tournament, the uh, Dean and DeLuca, Kevin Kisner. Little nerves on the final hole, maybe hit his drive right into the crowd, and then his approach over the back of the green. But then uh, brilliantly executed a lag putt from well off the green and uh, knocked home a five footer uh, for the par and the victory, which moved Kisner from seventeen to seven in the FedEx Cup standings. Uh, took, uh, you know, he he's now. Missed, he missed the playoffs in his first three seasons, but he's made it to the postseason the last three seasons, and this guy has come up second in a lot of tournaments, some playoffs in the two-man tournament in Louisiana. Uh, but he broke through. It was his second win. Uh, he also won the, uh, oh, what was it, last year? I uh, can't believe I don't have it written down here. The uh, RCM... Is that what it is RCM? The uh, that's the tournament. I'm just not I'm saying it right. The RCM Classic, mm-hmm. RMC. Yeah, I forget one. But that was his first win. Wins again here, um, and uh, you know he wasn't looking. He he's now fourth on the U.S. President's Cup team standings too, which is kind of impressive. So Kisner is a guy who's uh, been on that leaderboard for much of the past two or three years, and then he gets a second win. And he's just another one of these guys that we want to say that Jason Day and and uh, Jordan Spieth and, and Rory are going to be dominant in Dustin Johnson. There's so many other guys. You could take Kevin Kisner's uh, resume over the past year and put it up against Spieth or McElroy, and Kisner's is going to look better. Yeah. I agree. And he's, he's quite a player. I, I think he's um, going to be around for quite some time. Um, and he he almost won the Players' Championship there a couple of years ago, um, both on the 18th hole in regulation, the 72nd hole in regulation. And he only missed by a quarter of an inch. And then the same thing in the playoff, and I think that's when Ricky Fowler won, um, or did Sergio Garcia win. But um, he got he only got beat because of some spectacular play by the guy in the playoff. Yeah. So but if he'd have won that, and that's a huge win if he'd have got that. But he's been in the hunt for some time. Um, I think he's going to be around. He's got a good, solid game. I don't think he's the longest guy in the world. But he's a solid player. Good temperament. I think he's a good pick. And the win, just winning can't hurt things, especially, right. you know, a guy like this that's been 
up there at the top. Once you learn how to win, this is the second win. More could follow. Right. Uh, a guy who knows a lot about winning, Jordan Spieth, found himself three over par through 23 holes, hurtling towards missing another weekend. He missed the cut of the players and the Byron Nelson. So Spieth uh, not looking too great as of late, but he battles back with a final round 65, finishes second. Another guy that finishes tied for second with speed is John Rahm, who now sits fourth in the FedEx Cup standing, which is unbelievable. John Rahm, not his rookie season, his first full season, though, right. fourth in FedEx Cup standings right now. Um, only players with multiple wins ahead of him. So while Rahm, has, he has one win this year, but he's got, like, tons of top fives and top tens every week, yeah. every week. He is, Rahm is, is the next number one player in the world. He's going to be tough to uh, contend with at the Ryder Cups as well. That's not uh, sure he's Spanish. Yeah, it's a little scary to think about uh, him joining some of those guys. He's next, a little fiery, which is good and bad. Yeah, you know, he can get that temperament going in a bad sense, but he's got quite a game. So, in addition to the Dean of Deluca this week, it was the another major for the Champions Tour, Seniors Tour, Champions Tour, uh, but. KitchenAid PGA Senior Championship. Right. It's tough to take these things as majors when you throw a sponsor name in front of it. But, again, these are – there's a champion store. You got to survive. Know? Yeah. But KitchenAid definitely doesn't uh, lend itself to uh, making that sound like it's a major for sure. Yeah, it doesn't. But Bernard Lyons is 59 years old, <clears throat> and he he's now won all five senior majors. Um, you know, he tied Nicholas – Record of eight senior majors last week with his comeback victory at the Regions Tradition. And um, now he surpassed him with the Senior PGA Championship, which was the only one that, that Longer, I think, hadn't won. So now Longer's won all five. There's five senior majors. Is that correct? Yeah, I think? That's, that's right. Yeah, so he's won them all now. And at 59 years old, he's just as good as he was at 49. We well, just think about the, um, for the most part, the bigger names on tour when they graduate to the uh, the Senior PGA. They st- they win a lot initially, right? Until and, age 53, yeah, I was gonna 54. Say, yeah, for like two, three, four years. And then it's just like, all right, you know, had enough. This guy's still motoring for, you know, six years past that and winning tournaments, winning majors, contended in the Masters last year. It was in the, you know, on the, mm-hmm. uh, high up on the leaderboard on Sunday. I mean, what, what, uh, I want to know what the magic potion is that this guy's, that this guy's drinking well, to, uh, to keep it physically keep it fit. Like yeah, absolutely. He's... There looks to be not no body fat, no bad back. But just a um, desire. So he's yeah. got a lot of desire. And he, I think now he's traveling around. He, he goes with his wife to all the sites and all that. So he's probably having a, like a vacation every week. Sure. Just goes out and plays golf for five or six hours, and then goes back and hangs out with his family. And he wins three, four hundred thousand bucks every time he plays. But think about think about that though. Playing five. Six, well, they're, what do they play three rounds, right? Well, so I think the majors, majors might be four. This is probably four. But th- back to what we were talking about earlier, how grueling a schedule that is. Right. And, you know, he's playing regularly on the tour yep. still. And, uh, I mean, I guess. At 59 years old. It contrasts that with Tiger, who can't physically, right. you know, complete these tournaments. 41 mm-hmm. years old. And, um, I mean, I know it's it's still a living but a guy like that doesn't need need the money so he just obviously loves loves the game right. but to keep himself in that great a shape not only playing four or five times a week but you know having to exercise and do that you know a gary player-esque type of thing yeah um it's just amazing it's, it's great to see him you know i never was a big fan of his coming up but and uh when i watched but you gotta love uh you gotta love what he's doing now. the results are good I, yeah. I i agree with your analogy of um not enjoying watching him play and all that. He's he's kind of hard, but he's quite a player. Yeah. You know, the, the numbers speak for themselves. I and inspiring, I think, you know, is I think we're moving into a, a era where we might not be shocked to see a 60-year-old maybe contend for a major championship on the regular tour right. the way Tom Watson did. Yeah. Right. Um, that might not be just such an anomaly, you right. know. Um, because not only did Longer play great this weekend, but Vijay Singh came in second, mm-hmm. and he's another guy who mm-hmm. might be have one more push for another major title on the regular tour. Right. Yeah, he's a guy you could definitely see. I mean, he's always been uh, physically fit, and uh, he's right. a he's a practice machine. But yeah, a guy like that could definitely do. It. I mean, Tom Watson. You're not thinking of Tom Watson as a guy who's you know. They've, uh, uh, 
model of uh, you know fitness. You know, he's good shape. He's thin guy, but you don't think of him in that regard, um, like Langer. But you know, if if Tom Watson can roll, you know, roll through the British Open like he did, um, if the courses suit those guys and they find right. the right track to play on, I mean, it's it's definitely possible. Well, I think too. You got all these guys on the tour now. But anybody on tour age twenty through thirty five forty. They're going to be, they're all, majority of them are going to be in great shape when they're 50. It's just right. the nature of um, the way most humans are at this point, you know. Right. Of, I have people I say 60s is the new 50, or, you know, 50 is the new 40. It's true. In this day and age, right. you are more physically fit and healthy and active um, at 60 and even 70 than you were 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Yep. So, yep. So just with all the talented players, I just won't be surprised to see a lot of these guys, you know. And, again, will Phil Mickelson go play the Champions Tour when he turns 50, or will he continue to play the PGA Tour, you know? We'll have to see. So we have a product here to tell you guys about. Flat Cat. It's the Lampkin Flat Cat Solution Putting Grip. Uh, Lampkingrips.com is the website but the new flat cat solution by lampkin is golf's first answer to the dreaded yips features a patented stainless steel weighted cone optimally positioned directly below the hands in the exclusive flat one grip shape the new flat cat solution will instantly create a smoother more consistent and more confident putting stroke 49.99 free shipping from their website and you know i look at this thing and i think it's perfect for anyone struggling uh with putts inside five feet you know yeah. honestly that nothing will kill your love of the game more than just being lost you know on the close ones right. and i think that this will it's harder with that weighted grip yeah. to to pull one or to push one but now right you've i haven't put it on my putter yet yeah i uh, i did i i I put, uh, they have a, a oversized one as well as the standard size. This, this, That's the standard? This here is the standard size. Show the end of that, too, here. Let me get you on full screen. The, the, the real thing is that patented yeah, cone way. at the bottom. And it's 100 grams. Yeah. It's heavy. It's, it's definitely heavy. And, I, and um, initially, I've, I put both on. I've used both, both grips. Um, initially, I put the oversized one on because I've had some, of, uh, some other putter grips out there that were a little oversized that I used. Um, and I will say this, it takes a while to get used to. Um, the first few times I played with it, with the oversized one, um, I just didn't, uh, it didn't, couldn't get used to it. I couldn't get used to the, the weight of it. However, I changed to the standard size one um, with, with a much more comfortable uh, feel to the grip itself. And once I got past, um, again, going back to the, with the weight on the bottom of the grip, once I got past the feel of it, because it definitely feels different. You put this grip on your club, and now all of a sudden you have a weight right where your hands are. It's it's like wait, this doesn't uh, this doesn't feel normal, you know? It doesn't feel natural. But then if you roll it roll it around for a while, and you uh, you get used to it, you, you hit it, hit a ton of them on the putting green, and you take it out on the course. It definitely keeps you on plane. It keeps your, your your stroke right through the ball, and you definitely don't have those pushes or pulls that you would have, uh, you know, if, if you got the case of the yips or things like that. So um, initially, I, I had some issues with it, but now I'm sold on it. I really like the grip, and I think um, that anybody that has a lot of issues with, with close-range putts um, would definitely be willing to give this a try. It's definitely worth it. Well, you know, when you are struggling inside – three, four feet, mm -hmm. you want something that feels different. Yeah. You know, you want something to change. Yeah. It doesn't have to necessarily be the whole putter. It could be the grip. So I just said, you've seen a lot of changes in grips, putting grips, yeah. over the past five years. So the supersized grips, the different shapes of the grips. This is the first time I actually have seen a grip that's counterbalanced on the grip. Yeah, and then the, the flat, you know, basically the grip itself, too, is flat on both sides. So you have the, uh, it's kind of rounded on the top and the mm -hmm. bottom, but uh, it was flat cat, it says that you can see the narrow, it's, right. it's, but it sets your hands up really nice as well. Right. So that weight there right by your hands, just, it pulls your hands along right. in the direction, the straight direction, back and forth. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think they're onto something here. I think this right. is uh, something you'll see a lot of people go into um, very soon. Yeah, there's some other grips that have the counterbalance at the butt end, right. which mm -hmm. does the opposite of what that does. Yeah. 
but um, I think it's a combination of the weight being below your hands and then the two flat spots on either side to get your, your palms against the flat spots. Mm-hmm. Now you got opposing hands, yep. which should take a lot of the hand play out. Exactly. But I think the weight below the hands makes it feel like a heavier putter. Yeah, it drags your hands yeah. the, the, the direction instead right. of you trying to push or pull it and guide it in. It won't right. let you guide it. It, it. it takes your hands back. If, mm-hmm. you, if you bring them back straight, it'll take them through straight. So you struggle with the size. The, the <clears throat> diameter change was a big change for you out of the gate. Yeah, because it's right. still big. It was bigger. Um, the oversized grip was bigger than some of the other oversized right. I've used. Right. The standard is probably a little bigger than normal, but yep. it's it's closer to what I had uh, used, in, yeah. used previously. So I'm going to leave the standard one on that I have yeah. on my putter now and uh, keep going through the through the season. Hopefully it'll show I, me I good results. I put the grip on for, it, for him, and yep. I, I thought it was tremendous. I tried it on the carpet a couple of times in the shop. I didn't yeah. miss one in the shop, um, <laughs> but I typically don't. But um, it, it is a nice-feeling grip. I'd highly recommend that yeah. grip. Um, it isn't meant for everybody, but now what they're doing, you're talking about all the different grips they're making, Jim. It's really because of different styles and different – different ways to help people right you know if you're real handsy you can get a big diameter or yeah. a small diameter the opposite way and this with the opposing flat spots i think makes perfect sense yeah the um the the, the longer putts were the hardest part initially because of the uh the weight mm-hmm. and almost like you would think that you'd have to hit it softer but you almost right. have to hit it a little harder uh, to get the ball there but once you get right. that down yeah. Um, it, it really, really helps on your shorter putts, and right. it does. It still keeps you on playing on the longer ones as well. So bring up a good point because golfers are typically looking for instant gratification. Mm-hmm. So here's a great product, but you need to go out and hit a couple hundred yeah. putts on the Absolutely. putting green because it is a different feel. Yep. But I think it is a much better feel. Yep. No yeah. doubt. No doubt. Good. So definitely recommend it. Now I'm sitting on mine because I feel like I feel actually pretty good with the putter, so I didn't want. But you know, as putting goes. Uh, it ebbs and flows, and exactly. when it when it ebbs, I like to go to either grab a different putter, all right. completely. But the, I already have pre planned. Right. When that next you know struggle comes, I'm probably going to throw this thing on my existing putter first sure. and give that a shot mm-hmm. uh, because I do like the mm-hmm. idea. So LampkinGrips.com again, it's free shipping. The grip itself is fifty dollars. Sounds like a lot for a grip until you realize that that. You, you you just can't believe how heavy that little cone is. Yeah. It's 100, 100 grams. grams is, is significant. And they got a patent on it. So it's yeah. uh there there's some technology there behind that. So yeah. it's pretty interesting. If you take care of it, that grip will last 5, 6, 7, 10 years. Oh yeah. You yeah. just got to wash it every once in a while. So don't be alarmed by the price. Yeah. It's an you investment. Know, it's a buck sure. a year when it's all said and done. So yeah, and if you make a couple of putts, you win a couple of bucks off your friends, it kind of pays for itself. No That's doubt. right. No so doubt. So uh, again, lambkingrips.com. So we have about what? We have about six, seven minutes here left. Time to talk about uh, one of my favorite tournaments of the year, which would be the Memorial Jacks Tournament, mm-hmm. Murfield Village, uh, 7,392 7, yard track, par 72. And Opened in 1974, been a favorite stop on the PGA Tour, but also hosted Ryder Cup, President's Cup. Um, It's uh, an amateur U.S. men's am, I believe, that hosted. And uh, it's it's got that second-tier major type of feel to it, like the Players Tournament does. And and really, I got the four majors, the players, and then I go Memorial in terms of... I still like the Memorial more than, like, the FedEx Cup playoffs. I don't know when that... <clears throat> might switch but I don't think uh, it will but uh, great tournament it's uh, catch it on TV this week Thursday through Friday 2.30 to 6.30 on the Golf Channel Saturday 12.30 to 2.30 on the Golf Channel before heading over after you take that half hour break for whatever reason <laughs> uh, from 3 to 6 at CBS then Sunday noon to 2 on Golf Channel final round coverage on CBS 2.30 to 6 FedEx Cup leader Dustin Johnson and world number 3 Jason Day who makes Columbus his adopted hometown, where he lives now, uh, highlights a lineup that features seven of the top ten in the ra- in the world rankings, 18 of the top 30. Number two, Rory McIlroy had committed but withdrew after a flare-up of the rib injury that sidelined him earlier this year. So uh, William McGirt won it last year. It was his first PGA Tour victory. Remember, he outlasted Joe John Curran on the second hole mm-hmm. of a playoff. And just one man has ever won back-to-back Memorial titles. He won three in a row, and that man was Tiger Woods, Eldrick. Tiger Woods, 1999 through 2001. So, great tournament at the Memorial. It's got that. Uh, it's a big boy course. It, it's, it's it feels, it, I don't want to say, it's 
got more of an Augusta feel to it than um, than it does, say, uh, you know, a U.S. Open type of feel to it. It's got that, like, exclusive club yeah. t- tournament type of feel feel and you watch it year after year on that same course and you really yeah i really enjoy it now you played Muirfield village brownie i have right? not oh that's right you guys on the grounds. i was on the grounds but i didn't get to play there so but it's it's beautiful golf course i think it's augusta with rough it's got jack's you know I mean? jack's handprints all yeah, over it does. you know what i mean fingerprints all over and he it. didn't design it in 74 and let it sit they're constantly modifying right. Right. the course so um let's get our picks i'm gonna you want me to go first sure i'm gonna go with the hometown guy so, so-called home, hometown Jason guy, Day. Jason Day. Hmm. Uh, you know, what he, it was a couple of weeks ago. He played pretty well at the players, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with him. He's had some rest, and he's gonna be ready to go. Okay. I'm a guy not he's not playing too well lately, but he plays well there. Is Hideki Matsuyama? Yeah, that's, I know that's he's won one. before, and I think he finished second the year before that. Yeah. So, I'm gonna go with Hideki. I got a shocker for you guys here. Oh, okay, <laughs> with all that's been going on. I think what you're going to see is Thursday morning, via helicopter, Tiger Woods <laughs> is going to fly in. He's exempt because he's a lifetime champ. Yeah. He's going to tee it up and he's going to he's going to shoot uh, four rounds in the 60s. Just, <laughs> Just yeah. kidding, right? I like William McGirt. I do. I think he's been playing better late. I think he's going to be the first guy to defend his title. Uh, since Woods did it back in uh, 2000, um, year 2000, and then again 2001. Right. Um, it, it's just so hard. I, part of me wants to go with Jordan Spieth because he's starting to play better, but you could always go with Dustin Johnson. I got a feeling about William McGirt. It's a good pick. It was good to see, uh, not to go back to the other tournament, but last week's tournament, it was good to see some of the big names back up at the mm-hmm. top of the a lot leaderboard. Of big names. It's been a few weeks, it seems like, since mm-hmm. we've had some, uh, some the, the big names be there and, 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 really yeah. make it interesting yeah the horses were there yeah so this tournament's really a memorial event who are they honoring this year do you know oh i do actually um greg norman okay they're, they're honoring greg norman and they're also honoring a longtime golf digest editor okay because so. he's kind of got a hall of fame built there in a sense yeah. uh, but it's all over it's a lot of supporters of golf and other that but i like what jack's done with that event as far as that true yeah. memorial Event. Is now, that, I wonder what Greg Norman will, uh, I wonder if they'll have him up in the broadcast booth after what he said about golf announcers. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, well he's friends out, with Jack, so I'm sure he can do what he wants. He called so. out Faldo, though, directly. Yeah. And it is CBS. Yeah, CBS is a oh, tournament, so maybe uh, maybe they won't. Well, the ceremony will be on Thursday. We'll just see the excerpts of it, and that's it. So. Is the other one, Dan Hicks? Is that the uh, the Golf Digest tonight? No, it isn't Hicks. I can't. No. It was a... Dan Jen- Jenkins. Jenkins? It could have yeah, been. Yeah, Hicks. I'm sorry, Jenkins. It, it could have been. I, I can't remember. I just know he was a Golf Digest editor. Yeah. Um, so, I have not had the opportunity to see too much of the NCAA tournament uh, golf championships this week, but I know that you guys caught some, and I know yeah. that uh, your alma mater, Barry <laughs> University of Miami, yes. won the D2 women's title. They so, did. congratulations. Yeah, that, that was exciting for them. going to fly first. down for the party? <laughs> oh, I am going to Florida this week, but I'm not going to make it down there. Um, yeah, Barry University, Division II, Sunshine State Conference. Um, Great golf program, uh, men's and women's. They won the men's title, uh, I think, three times in Division Two. Uh, but uh, this year they won the, uh, the Division Two women's championship. So that was cool to uh, see the old alma mater uh, win a tournament. Good. Absolutely. So the women's was this week, and the men's are next week. And it's great because it's match play for you guys who like team golf. Mm-hmm. Um, there's an individual component as well. But it's during the week, so you're not, you know, you don't have to choose between the final round of the Dina DeLuca right. and the – championship match of the right. NCAA because it's uh, generally, what, Monday through Thursday? Well, the match play starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. And yeah. today was the cut down to the final eight teams, and an individual was a NCAA champion for an individual. Uh, but tomorrow starts match play. They'll get down to two teams for Monday. I'm sorry, for Wednesday. Right. It'll go, they'll be double round tomorrow. So tomorrow's a big day. And then there'll be just a single round on um, Wednesday if the weather cooperates. So. All on the Golf Channel. All on the Golf Channel. And... Um, I think coverage comes on tomorrow like 11 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, and Wednesday it comes on at 4 because it's in Chicago area, hour behind us. But the girls, they, they had two they, two sudden-death matches at, uh, for Northwestern and Arizona State. looked like they weren't going to, in the girls' side, they weren't going to make it into the finals. And um, 
a couple of great shots coming into 18. Next thing you know, it goes sudden death. They flipped those matches around, and uh, Arizona State and uh, Northwestern played in the finals, and Northwestern, it's their home territory. Yep. Yeah. So, great story. It's good golf. A lot of theater. Um, remember last year on the boys' side, Oregon pulled it out in Oregon. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, in sudden death. Fred Funk's son was the one of the guys on the opposite, the team that was not fortunate enough to win. He was in the playoff. Casey Martin's team, right? Casey Martin, yeah. yeah. It was good golf. Yeah. Yeah, and high drama, which is uh, yeah. which is always fun. And you get that more so in the team events. Yep. He's, it's, uh, it's always nice to be part of a team when you're, especially in such an individual sport, when you get a chance to be a part of a team and experience that, I think that you try – not you don't try harder, but you you will you have a little more will I think because you're not doing it just for yourself right. you're doing it for your teammates as well and, props, and in that case all the alumni props to the NCAA for bringing this match play back in because for many years it was just one individual champion and that was it mm -hmm. I think they've been doing this now I'm gonna say four or five years and it's been great you still get the individual champion that's over today mm -hmm. and then um, the top eight teams move on to tomorrow yeah that's great yep so. Rhett, you mentioned you are heading down to Florida, yeah. and we're going to get a full re review next week. And yeah. it's going to—it's a new resort down there that's world class. You guys are playing. Yeah, we're playing Stream Song Resort, okay. which is uh, new in the last five years. Um, they have three courses. One, uh, their third one's going to be open in the fall. They're just finishing it up, the black. But we're going to play the red and the blue. Um, it's a, uh, a link style course. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere, just outside of Tampa. But um, you can walk. You, you know, they—they they prefer that you walk. Um, most of the time of the year, we're gonna we're gonna walk. Um, I'm gonna walk both. Some of my buddies are gonna walk uh, 18. It's and, gonna be 95 and degrees. You yeah, know. it's gonna be 95. There's a chance of rain. You know, we're gonna get through it though. But they, um, I know it's a it's a big statement, but they're they're um, one of the top 50 in the country courses you can play. Um, and you know they're they consider themselves or they're trying to become more like the East Coast Band and Dunes type of facility where they'll have you know five six courses by the time it's all said and mm -hmm. done. So we're gonna give that a ride on Friday. We we'll play the TPC of Tampa on Thursday and then uh, World Woods Golf Club on Saturday. So full nice. slate. And then you'll be back here with us next Monday night. Yeah, I'll be back Sunday morning. So we'll be here Monday to talk about Stream Song and uh, and give give that a little bit of a review. Good deal. Yep. And we'll have another Tiger update. I probably will. <laughs> well, you, that's, we'll that's, that's, that's it's coming. Yeah. The ESPN all day today. I'll say, so there's nothing to talk about, really. And we, we talked about for a half an hour. There's yeah. nothing to talk about. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, we're no rehashing stuff. He got a DUI. and yeah. we, uh, It's all speculation. But, you know, how? what else could we talk about? Yeah. Right. What do you, I mean, it, we, we said he, we're talking about a lot of things about him that aren't uh, golf-related anymore. But he still makes us talk about him. He does. <laughs> So, so yeah. So hey, enjoy your trip. Thank you. Hopefully, it'll stop raining around here, and we can uh, play some golf here in upstate New York. And uh, thanks to everyone for spending time with us here on the GolfJ.com podcast. Connect with us online on Twitter at the GolfJ, on Instagram at uh, the underscore GolfJ, and on Facebook at facebookcom GolfJ. All of our episodes and the best of the wide world of golf on the web can be found at GolfJ.com. We'll be back next Monday night. Until then, uh, hit them long, not often. Golfj.com